You let them handcuff you? Wouldn't be much of a surrender if I resisted. And if it makes them feel more secure, then, then all the better for it. Men of Steel, like the rest of Zack Snyder's filmography, is divisive. Snyder's reinterpretation of Superman is dark and borderline cynical, sharing more in common with Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy than most Superman comics. Nonetheless, Man of Steel offers a fascinating glimpse into Superman's psyche and who Clark Kent would realistically be in a modern setting. Man of Steel's depiction of Superman is more than meets the eye. While Zack Snyder's interpretation of the DC Universe isn't for everyone, there is more to Man of Steel's depiction of Superman than meets the eye. Help. I know you did, but we talked about this. Right? Right? We talked about this. You have... Oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. Clark Kent's solemn demeanor in Man of Steel stems in part from how intensely he was mothered as a child in Kansas. Clark is discovered as a baby, but his upbringing isn't particularly pleasant. While Clark's childhood in Kansas was always fraught with danger due to his abilities, Man of Steel takes this to its logical conclusion. Clark is disliked by his peers, he feels actively alienated by those around him, and he has a very modern fear of being experimented on as a result of Ma and Pa Kent's words. Clark is never allowed to be vulnerable emotionally or physically as the child. It's only natural that Superman grows up to be a downer. This man is not our enemy. Thank you, Carl. Clark doesn't have much guidance growing up, aside from Ma and Pa Kent, who desperately want to see their son safe and out of harm's way. His abilities are both overwhelming and terrifying to him. Clark feels the weight of the world on his shoulders, even before he becomes Superman, but he can't do anything about it. When Clark becomes an adult, he feels compelled to help those around him, but his path to becoming Superman is fraught with difficulty. Why am I so different from them? A son that's younger and brighter than Krypton's was. Your cells have drunk in its radiation, strengthening your muscles, your skin, your senses. Earth's gravity is weaker, yet its atmosphere is more nourishing. You've grown stronger here than I ever could have imagined. The only way to know how strong is to keep testing your limits. Clark Kent does not always become Superman right away, sometimes spending time as Superboy, or simply hunkering down in Smallville before embracing his identity as the Man of Steel. Clark Kent takes a very long time to become Superman in comparison to his counterparts. Clark doesn't put on the suit for the first time until he is 33 years old. One of the most important aspects of Zack Snyder's Superman and Man of Steel is his inexperience. Clark Kent is learning what it means to be a hero as he goes through life, gradually gaining control of his powers over the course of the film. This also implies that Clark isn't fully aware of his surroundings, as evidenced by his fight against Zod's forces. Superman isn't unconcerned about collateral damage, but he's not a seasoned superhero. He saved people as Clark Kent, but as Superman, he's never fought literal gods among men. The utter destruction of Metropolis is a terrifying sight, to which Superman contributes only to stop Zod. Alright, you've got our attention. What is it you want? I would like to speak to Lois Lane. What makes you think she's here? Don't play games with me, General. I'll surrender. But only if you guarantee Lois' freedom. Although Superman's politicization is more prominent in Batman v Superman, it remains an important theme in Man of Steel. Zack Snyder's interpretation of Superman is inherently political in the sense that the United States seeks ownership of his actions, America's mistrust of Superman is a major plot point, and Clark giving himself up in chains as a sign of good faith demonstrates that Superman is willing to play ball politically, which comes back to haunt him in Dawn of Justice. 
you effing stupid? It's one of your surveillance drones. That's a $12 million piece of hardware. It was. Clark Kent, the Man of Steel, is a quiet, solemn man who is unsure of his place in the world. He doesn't express himself emotionally and isn't particularly comforting. Clark only begins to open up and show some vulnerability when he meets Lois Lane. Clark is a little more upbeat as Superman, but it's all an act for Man of Steel. Clark gives a good performance as Superman at the end of the film, but it's clearly staged and an example of Clark attempting to be the Man of Steel. Clark is more at ease in Batman v Superman, but he still struggles with Superman related insecurities. Never hurt you? You really can't. It's not what I meant. I meant, are you all right? I wanted to hit that kid. I wanted to hit him so bad. I know you did. I mean, part of me even wanted you to, but then what? To say the least, Zack Snyder's interpretation of Pa Kent is difficult to swallow. In contrast to the comic book Jonathan Kent, who knew the good his son could do in the world, Kent in Man of Steel is terrified that the world will reject Clark. He is adamantly opposed to Clark becoming Superman, even giving up his life so Clark can try to live a normal life. The tragedy of Clark's arc is that he will never be able to live a normal life and his father's sacrifice will be in vain. Nonetheless, Clark loves his adoptive father and is able to become Superman on his own terms while honoring his legacy. Above all, Man of Steel wants to portray Superman as a person, not a god. Audiences aren't allowed to get too close to Clark's mind, but Henry Cavill's performance paints a portrait of a nuanced man who wants to do good but doesn't know how with his skill set. Man of Steel depicts Superman as a vulnerable, flawed and deeply insecure man. It's an unsettling portrayal of Superman, but it's refreshing in retrospect. You're as much a child of Earth now as you are of Krypton. You can embody the best of both worlds. The dream your mother and I dedicated our lives to preserve. The people of Earth are different from us, it's true. But ultimately, I believe that's a good thing. They won't necessarily make the same mistakes we did. Not if you guide them, Carl. Arguably, the greatest flaw of Zack Snyder's interpretation of the DCEU is that it isn't interested in establishing context Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Justice League all work on the preconceived notion that audiences understand who these characters are on a pop culture level. Superman isn't established as his proper heroic self in Man of Steel, because the point of the movie is solely to deconstruct your pop culture understanding of who Superman is, transplanting him into a more modern and cynical setting to see how he would fit in. You're hemorrhaging internally, and if I don't cauterize this bleed, I can do things that other people can't. Man of Steel and Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy aren't set in the same universe, but the former has more than just a producer in common with the latter. Man of Steel resembles Batman Begins in more ways than one, and this extends to the characters of Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. Whereas Batman Begins is an emotionally charged look at Bruce Wayne, Man of Steel is more detached and seeks to portray Superman as a colder figure. In Batman Begins, where Batman is usually quiet and brooding, he is emotionally charged, whereas Superman is usually cheerful and upbeat. The definite contrast in Man of Steel. Mom? I'm alright! <sighs> nice suit, son. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, make sure to click on the screen to watch more. Also, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any other episodes.